starting to practice magic from Uchiha. Chapter 1. In the cold winter, everything was silent. Except for the ninjas on duty, there was almost no one in the entire Konoha village. In the forest outside Konoha, the white snow almost covered all traces. The cold wind passed through the forest, and the snowflakes on the treetops swayed and fell on the ground, forming tiny snow piles. This weather is really cold, but it's okay. If it were really summer, I wouldn't dare to enter this death forest. A boy of 12 or 13, wearing a white coat, moved in the jungle like a ghost. As Konoha's training ground, the death forest not only has many ferocious beasts captured by ninjas, but also has a lot of monitoring devices installed in the entire forest. Even if there are no activities such as the Chunin exam now, most of the cameras are turned off, but they may not be completely undetected. However, when it snows heavily in winter, there is no need to consider this problem. The snowflakes will automatically cover all the cameras. Although the boy's training did not have many things to be avoided, he did not doubt the ability of the ninjas to see the big picture from the small details. In order to avoid being scrupled in the future and to keep his trump card, he chose to act directly in winter. Roar. With a roar, a giant bear three meters tall crawled out of the tree hole in the shaking of the earth and mountains. These gigantic animals are all infiltrated by chakra. They are fierce beasts between ninja beasts and ordinary animals. They do not have the wisdom and chakra application skills of ninja beasts, but they can use chakra to strengthen their bodies roughly. At the same time, their combat power is far superior to that of ordinary beasts. Especially large and ferocious beasts such as lions, tigers, bears and pigs, their combat power is not weak. After being strengthened by chakra, they can be called extremely ferocious. In the era of cold weapons without extraordinary elements, this giant bear can destroy several villages and even some small towns by itself. Good fellow, it is worthy of being a beast in the world of Naruto. It is not completely in hibernation. The boy looked up at the beast in front of him with an excited expression on his face, and casually pulled out a kunai from his pocket. As if sensing the threat from the boy, the giant bear in front of him roared twice and stood up directly from the snow. When it was on all fours, the giant bear was already nearly three meters tall, and when this huge beast stood up, it was six or seven meters tall, close to the height of a three-story building. Facing such a huge beast, ordinary people would have almost no chance of winning without using hot weapons, but the boy in front of him did not feel nervous at all. Instead, he raised his head and looked directly at the giant bear in front of him. In an instant, the boy's eyes turned blood red, and a tiny magatama appeared in his eyes. The huge giant bear looked at the boy's eyes slightly, and suddenly the body trembled, and the whole giant bear was a little absent-minded. Just when the giant bear was distracted, the boy threw the kanai in his hand without hesitation, piercing the giant bear's throat with a sound of, kai, directly cutting the giant bear's trachea. Roar. In the sound of severe pain, the giant bear quickly came to his senses, let out a strange roar after the trachea was ruptured, and suddenly pounced on the boy in front of him. However, the boy now no longer had the idea of fighting with the giant bear. Tracheal rupture, this kind of injury is a serious injury that will definitely kill the giant bear in front of him. However, with the vitality of this beast, it can still retain its complete combat power for at least a few minutes. He doesn't want to fight with this dying beast. In terms of pure strength and physique alone, ordinary Chunin may not be able to compare with this beast, not to mention that this giant bear is seriously injured, and its last breath is even more ferocious. As a ninja, this meaningless battle is naturally avoided if possible. With a flash of his figure, with the help of Chakra, the boy jumped onto a big tree in an instant, watching the giant bear madly hitting the tree, swaying on the tree, and just when he fell, he jumped directly to another big tree. He just slipped away from the giant bear for a few minutes, and the huge giant bear fell to the ground with a bang, and the breathing sound like a bellows gradually became lower, and finally disappeared completely. The boy standing on the tree waited for a moment, and when he saw that the giant bear finally died, he smiled and stretched out a hand. Come to me. As the boy's voice fell, a little light that was invisible to the naked eye appeared on the whole giant bear, and finally condensed into a ball of light that only the boy could see, and flew into his hands with a whoosh. The ball of light was not big, about the same size as a ball. Inside the ball of light, the giant bear that had been killed showed a head, twisting and roaring. 
Looking at the ball of light in front of him, the boy patted his chest, squinted his eyes slightly, felt the roaring soul in his body, and the power it brought to him, and sighed helplessly. There is no improvement at all, it just improved my strength and physique a little, and increased a small part of chakra. The qualifications of this kind of spirit are too low. Except as a consumable material for increasing chakra, it is almost useless. While speaking, the boy pulled out the soul light ball of the giant bear again, took a look at it, and bit it directly. The soul light ball trembled, emitting chaotic mental fluctuations, as if it were a shrill scream, but the young man ignored it and ate the entire soul light ball in a few mouthfuls. A warm feeling came from it. As the energy emanated from his abdomen, the young man clenched his fists and felt the chakra in his body grow a little more. The loss of the method of subduing the spirit is really great. The chakra in that giant bear's body is no longer weaker than mine. As a result, the increased chakra is not even a few hundredth of mine. If this continues, I don't know when chakra will turn into chakra. The giant bear soul that was taken by the boy not only increased the chakra in his body, but also had a trace of resentment full of hatred entangled in the boy's spirit. However, as the magatama in the boy's eyes rotated, the external hatred and the resentment was quickly eliminated, and instead became the foundation for the growth of Sharingan power. However, the beast's resentment and hatred are obviously not very high in terms of quantity or quality. This little bit of cold emotional fluctuation is useless to the Sharingan in the young man's eyes, but it is a drop in the bucket. It was precisely because of the multiple use of the spirit subduing method that the resentment entangled in the boy's body exceeded a certain level, which made him directly open the Magatama Sharingan. In order to advance the Sharingan, the resentment required is obviously more. After disposing of the soul of the giant bear, the young man took another look at the huge corpse at his feet. After thinking for a moment, he was about to cut off the two huge bear paws. At this moment, a voice suddenly came from behind. Uchiha Feiyu, you came to the death forest to poach again. The young man named Uchiha Feiyu turned his head and saw a child with white hair, about eight or nine years old, standing on the tree, looking at him with a speechless expression. These animals in the death forest were all captured with hard work by other ninjas. Some of them are used for ninja training, and some are even used to train ninja beasts and ninja bugs. You are not allowed to mess around here casually. Killing for fun. Uchiha Feiyu rolled his eyes and snorted. Kakashi Hitaki is the only one who can't say this to me. You've done as much damage in the death forest as I have. Kakashi shrugged and didn't answer. In fact, he often trained in the forest of death and didn't care about this at first. He just found an excuse to accuse the other party. Jumping down from the tree, Kakashi glanced at the giant bear lying on the ground. Even if an ordinary genin team were to deal with this thing, it would probably be difficult. Feiyu, you killed it by yourself. In terms of strength, you are probably no worse than a chunin. I really don't understand. With such strength, why are you still studying in ninja school? Why don't you graduate early and become an official ninja? Uchiha Feiyu rolled his eyes and said angrily. Don't talk about graduating from ninja school. I don't even want to be a ninja. After all, I was forced here, okay. I was living a good life, but because I awakened the Sharingan, I was forced to join the Uchiha clan, and I had to go to a ninja school to become a ninja. My goal is to do less and get more, and to get something for nothing. I don't want to go to the battlefield to kill people and set things on fire. Kakashi was suddenly speechless. The guy in front of him had no ninja mentality at all. Instead, he was almost like an ordinary villager. The three views are different. In this case, my own words are naturally the same as chickens and ducks. Thinking of this, Kakashi sighed helplessly. I really can't figure it out, why do you have such a good talent? It stands to reason that none of your ancestors have awakened the Sharingan. In addition, you only have one quarter of Uchiha blood. It's almost impossible to awaken the Sharingan. It's impossible. Uchiha Feiyu touched his eye sockets and immediately recalled the scene when he had just awakened his Sharingan. After he had just traveled to Konoha, he also opened his Golden Finger, a black book in his mind called the Encyclopedia of Demonic Tradition. Although it is called the Encyclopedia of Demonic Paths, in fact, Uchiha Feiyu only obtained the ability of the eight magical skills from the world under one person. 
The ability of this magical skill is to manipulate the souls of others, and even directly devour the souls to increase the skill. Therefore, even though the spiritual punishment general is called the eight wonderful skills, it does not violate the law at all when it appears in the inheritance of the devil. After Feiyu devoured many animal souls with the help of Julingshu general, he unknowingly awakened a pair of single Magatama Sharingan. It's just that there was no mirror at the time and he didn't see the changes in his eyes. He didn't know what happened at all. Being unprepared and unconcealed caused the information about his Sharingan awakening to leak out, and he was eventually dragged into the Uchiha clan. After all, he was not a member of the Uchiha clan at the beginning, and he did not know that his grandfather had Uchiha blood. So when he felt the changes in his eyes, he did not think about the Sharingan at all. As a result, he, a commoner, became famous in the Konoha ninja village. The Uchiha clan captured him back to the clan without saying a word and named him Uchiha. In fact, although most of Konoha's blood successor families are intermarriages within the clan, some members who are not ninjas have intermarried with outsiders. However, as long as the blood successor family awakens, they must return to the blood successor family. Of course, this kind of precedent is actually extremely rare. Those who would have engaged in intermarriage outside the clan are those who have thin blood, are not strong, and are not even ninja members at all. After another generation, the bloodline will decline a lot. A person like Uchiha Feiyu who only has one quarter of his blood stains and can still awaken is a rare thing in the entire Uchiha clan. Of course, he must be brought back to the family. It's just that it doesn't matter what Feiyu himself thinks when he joins Uchiha. There's nothing I can do. Who made Bloodstain wake up like this? Otherwise, I wouldn't need to practice courage in this forest of death now. To practice courage, most of the ninja school students enter the forest of death. I am afraid that instead of practicing courage, they will die here directly. If you want to train secretly here, just train secretly. Why make such an excuse? Hitaki Kakashi sneered at Uchiha Feiyu's words. Although this weird Uchiha is incompatible with ninjas in terms of outlook, and is essentially less suitable to be a ninja than the precious beast of Metkai, but in terms of strength, Uchiha Feiyu is not bad at all. The so-called courage training is just an excuse. You must know that when I joined the ninja school, the only one who couldn't win was the boy in front of me. Of course, although the two of them joined the ninja school at the same time, there is a big difference in age. Feiyu had no intention of becoming a ninja at first. It was after awakening the Sharingan that he had to join Uchiha and become a ninja, of school students. Therefore, among the many students who entered the ninja school early, this senior student who only joined the ninja school at the age of 10 is a strange one. Therefore, neither the teachers nor the students of the ninja school at that time thought that Kakashi and Uchiha Feiha were inseparable from each other, and it was not a stain. After all, Kakashi was only 5 years old at the time, and Uchiha Feiha was already 10 years old. But as Kakashi, who often competes with Uchiha Feiyu in the ninja school, he understands that Uchiha Feiyu may be much older than him, but he has been training under the guidance of his father for 2 years, while the other party is basically it's a zero level foundation, so the gap between the conditions between the two sides is not as big as imagined. Uchiha Feiyu is a genius who is by no means inferior to himself. In Kakashi's eyes, Uchiha Feiyu's various bad performances are just disguises. He who often goes to and from the forest of death is obviously a scroll king like himself now. Yes, 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 yes. Uchiha Feiyu said a few helpless words, which successfully made a vein pop up on Kakashi's head. You guy, if you really want to train, why waste the animals in the forest of death? Why don't you let me be your opponent? Uchiha Feiyu's face showed a somewhat troubled expression. Speaking of Kakashi, that's all you want to say, right? Of course. I have long wanted to compete with you again. I am much stronger now than when I was in the ninja school. I've heard that you are very famous now. You are the youngest genin and the youngest chunin since the establishment of the ninja village. Are you embarrassed to fight with me, a student of the ninja school? After hearing this, Kakashi was speechless. In fact, he often met Feiyu after graduation, but whenever he had any idea of challenge, the other party just ignored him and just didn't want to be with him anyway, fighting. However, Feiyu's tone changed at this time. 
However, if you are willing to help me introduce your father, I wouldn't mind fighting you for a few rounds. After Uchiha Feiyu finished speaking, Kakashi was slightly stunned, but he quickly reacted. Okay, it's a deal. Kakashi's father, Hitaki Sakumo, is the famous Konoha White Fang in the ninja world, and is one of the top ninjas in the entire Konoha ninja village. And now is the time when this Konoha White Fang is the most famous and famous in the world. It can be said that he is the most famous ninja in the entire Konoha ninja village except for the Hokage. For Kakashi, it is normal for someone to want to visit his father, and he didn't think too much about it. Uchiha Feiyu wanted to meet Konoha White Fang, of course, not because he admired Konoha White Fang's reputation and wanted to learn from him. On the contrary, Uchiha Feiyu thought of the original work, Hitaki Sakumo failed in his mission during this period, and then committed suicide amid rumors, he was targeting Hitaki Sakumo's soul. The soul binding is one of the eight great skills in the world of one person, and it is a skill that can forcibly restrain the souls of others, or even devour the souls of others. The power of the soul binding depends on the soul reserve in the hands of the owner. Unfortunately, there are no wild souls in the Naruto world. Generally speaking, after any creature in this world dies, as long as it exceeds 10 minutes, the soul will dissipate without a trace and go to the pure land. Therefore, Uchiha Feiyu, who has been staying in the Konoha ninja village, has not found the soul of any ninja even if he has been searching hard for more than 10 years. No matter how dangerous the Naruto world is, at least the current Konoha ninja village is still relatively safe for the time being. It is almost impossible to find the body of a ninja who has just died within 10 minutes. Uchiha Feiyu even went to the Konoha hospital to wait, but found that because of the popularity of medical ninjutsu, the ninjas who could be sent to the Konoha hospital were basically all able to be saved, and those who could not be saved died without being sent to the Konoha hospital. There are also places like the interrogation class, the intelligence class, and the Konoha prison where you can come into contact with fresh dead bodies, but they are all the vital parts of the Konoha ninja village, and no ninja student can come into contact with them at all. So until now, Uchiha Feiyu has only some animal souls in his hands, and has never got any ninja souls. Most of the animal souls were eaten directly by Uchiha Feiyu. He couldn't do things like devouring human souls, but he didn't have any psychological burden to absorb animal souls, and most animal souls, even if they were possessed, couldn't exert much combat power, so there was not much meaning. It was precisely because of these animal souls with chakra that Uchiha Feiyu was outstanding in both physical fitness and chakra volume among his peers and even among Uchiha of the same age, but only among his peers. Knowing these situations, it is clear how tempting the ninja souls of the level of Konoha White Fang are to Uchiha Feiyu. Even if the soul possession cannot bring out all the strength of the original owner, a strong man like Konoha White Fang is enough to make Uchiha Feiyu instantly have the top combat power among the Jonin. But now, Uchiha Feiyu first has to deal with the enthusiastic Kakashi. As the whistling cold wind blew, Kakashi pulled out a short knife from his waist, and the cold light flashed on the blade. Before Konoha White Fang committed suicide, the White Fang short knife was certainly not in Kakashi's hand, but the quality of this short knife is definitely first class. Compared with Kakashi, Uchiha Feiyu casually pulled out two kanai. Although he joined the Uchiha clan, it is easy to imagine that the Uchiha clan could not put much effort on him as an outsider, so the equipment on his body can be said to be ordinary. However, after holding the two kanai tightly, a black leopard-shaped soul suddenly appeared on Uchiha Feiyu. This was the strongest beast soul he had ever collected in the Forest of Death, a black panther with an extremely fast speed. With the help of the ability to summon spirits and send generals, the soul of this black panther could increase Uchiha Feiyu's nerve reflexes and physical speed by 50%. Kakashi had no way to see the soul, but he felt Uchiha Feiyu's instantaneous change in momentum, and his expression on his face was also somewhat excited, and subtle electric light began to jump on his body. Stimulating one's own cells to speed up through the lightning current was exactly what Konoha White Fang was good at. Obviously, Kakashi also inherited his father's unique skills. Feiyu threw the kanai in his hand and whistled at Kakashi. It was not a fancy kanai throwing method of the Uchiha family, but a pure and sharp throwing. Kakashi knocked the short knife in his hand, making a short and sharp clang sound. 
The kanai, which contained huge power, made Kakashi's wrist numb. Following closely behind, Feiyu raised the kanai in his hand high. Although it was a short weapon, he used it like a heavy weapon such as a hammer and smashed it down directly. Kakashi gritted his teeth lightly, raised his slightly numb arm, and violent sparks flew between the short sword and the kanai. At the same time, Kakashi also took several steps back. It's so heavy. Are you really an Uchiha? How come your fighting skills are so similar to that guy Akai? Sorry, although I have the Uchiha Sharingan, I didn't receive any education in Uchiha since I was a child. Compared with those fancy skills, I believe more in the physical foundation of thousands of hammers. In fact, Uchiha Feiyu had already planned his future training route, and the physical foundation can be said to be the top priority when he laid the foundation. Things like so-called skills can be made up by the ninja souls that will be obtained in the future, but in any case, the physical foundation of one's own body can only be improved by oneself. Moreover, the method of subduing the spirit can be said to be a comprehensive strengthening of Feiyu, not only chakra and spiritual power, but also physical strength. This also makes Feiyu's current fighting mode not at all Uchiha, but a bit like the Senju clan. After taking two steps back, Kakashi's figure flashed and directly launched the substitute technique. Feiyu, who had been attacking, split the substitute wood in half with a knife, frowned slightly, turned around, and kicked it out. Kakashi, who appeared behind Feiyu, was kicked into a ball of white smoke by Feiyu with a bang, and then a white light fell from the sky and pierced Feiyu's shoulder. I've been waiting for you. Feiyu chuckled, and the whole person retreated in an instant, avoiding Kakashi's ambush. As his body retreated, the kanai in his hand turned into a black light and shot towards Kakashi's chest. In the state of being possessed by the Black Panther soul, in addition to speed and nerve reflexes, Uchiha Feiyu's five senses and intuition will also increase significantly, and the clone technique and substitute technique cannot be hidden from him at all. Kakashi, who failed to ambush and was caught by Uchiha Feiyu, barely deflected the kanai. Before he could catch his breath, Uchiha Feiyu drew out two kanai again and rushed over again. After blocking several moves, Kakashi retreated one after another, but gradually calmed down. Uchiha Feiyu, who was possessed by the Black Panther soul, was almost the same in speed as Kakashi who used the lightning stimulation method, and in pure physical strength, he was far better than Kakashi, who was only nine years old now. But Kakashi, the genius ninja, still found the only shortcoming of Uchiha Feiyu, the use of physical skills and ninja tools was only solid, and the body was strong, but the technology was not outstanding. After all, Uchiha Feiyu did not receive a very good education and inheritance. Needless to say, the ninja school in Konoha only taught the basics of the basics. The Uchiha clan only gave Uchiha Feiyu some basic ninjutsu books and materials, and did not really train him. On the contrary, it was Hitaki Kakashi. The physical fitness of an eight-year-old child was far from the limit. Even if he relied on the stimulation of lightning chakra, he still had great shortcomings in physical strength. But if we only talk about sword skills, Hitaki Kakashi, who studied under Konoha White Fang, was eight feet away from Uchiha Feiyu. Discovering the shortcomings of Uchiha Feiyu's skills, Kakashi said nothing and never fought with Uchiha Feiyu again. The short knife in his hand drew arcs of light, and used sticking, sticking, and pulling techniques to remove the power of the kanai in Uchiha Feiyu's hand. After Kakashi changed his combat mode, Uchiha Feiyu was indeed very uncomfortable, but relying on the Black Panther soul in his body, Uchiha Feiyu's five senses and intuition were extremely sharp. With this keen sense, Kakashi had the upper hand, but it was difficult to take him down in a short time. Snowflakes flew up from the snow, accompanied by the clinking sound of weapons and sparks, and two figures shuttled through the woods and separated in an instant. Uchiha Feiyu looked at his torn white clothes and frowned slightly. Standing opposite, Hitaki Kakashi was unscathed, but his breathing was rapid and fine sweat flowed on his forehead. Although Kakashi had a certain advantage just now, the physique of an eight-year-old child still limited Kakashi's physical strength. After more than 10 minutes of full-scale fighting, Kakashi's physical strength was seriously depleted. It seems that I lost. Kakashi, you are improving so fast. You are worthy of being the most famous genius in Konoha village. Blood slowly seeped out from Uchiha Feiyu's torn clothes, gradually dyeing his sleeves red. 
Uchiha Feiyu casually pulled out gauze from the ninja bag, wrapped it around his arm, and bandaged the wound. The wound was not deep, and it didn't even have much impact on Uchiha Feiyu's battle, but it undoubtedly meant that Uchiha Feiyu was defeated. Kakashi took two deep breaths. He didn't win easily. If he fought for a few more minutes until his physical strength was exhausted, he would probably be the loser. Neither of them used much lethal ninjutsu in the battle, so although Kakashi's physical strength was consumed a lot, his chakra was still sufficient. He recovered after taking two breaths. You, if you behave more actively, you should be able to get a lot of resources. Since you have been practicing here secretly every day, why don't you behave better and ask for more resources from your family and village? In response to Kakashi's question, Uchiha Feiyu just chuckled and didn't explain much. With the soul binding and general condemning technique, he doesn't need to worry about not having any ninjutsu to use in the future. On the contrary, if he gets too many resources from the village or family, it will be difficult for him to just sit around and do nothing. Anyway, Kakashi was quite happy to win, especially since the battle was a back and forth battle, and both sides had done their best to some extent, which increased Kakashi's sense of achievement. Naturally, Kakashi did not refuse what he had promised Uchiha Feiyu, and gave Uchiha Feiyu a seal scroll, asking him to clean up the giant bear's body. However, because Konoha White Fang was out on a mission, Uchiha Feiyu could not go to pay a visit in a short time. After parting with Kakashi, Uchiha Feiyu returned to his home. His current house was a single-family house, which was built just outside the Uchiha clan's territory. After opening the door and walking into the house, Uchiha Feiyu looked up at the family photo on the desk, and a trace of haze flashed in his eyes. Not long after Uchiha Feiyu awakened the Sharingan, his civilian parents died suddenly due to an accident. Although Feiyu's feelings for his parents are not deep due to reincarnation, he is definitely not indifferent. He has been holding back his breath for the accidental death of the two. But firstly, he is weak now, and secondly, he does not know the real reason for his parents' death. Although the Uchiha clan is a big suspect, as a pseudo-miner with a mature mind and a very good understanding of the Konoha ninja village, Feiyu will not directly identify the Uchiha as the murderer. The conspirators in this world always like to brainwash ninjas through hatred and other methods. If someone deliberately uses this method to guide his hatred towards the Uchiha, Uchiha Feiyu will not be surprised at all. Uchiha Feiyu's performance has always been bad, of course, it is out of his nature not to want to be a ninja, and at the same time, there is also a part of the idea of disguising himself. As long as he is bad enough, no one can use him. After staying at home for two days, on the morning of the third day, Uchiha Feiyu, who was exercising, heard a knock at the door, wiped his sweat, and walked directly to the door. After the door opened, a white-haired boy appeared in front of Uchiha Feiyu. It was Hitaki Kakashi. Kakashi. Why did you come to see me? Could it be that Senior White Fang is back? Yes, you are lucky. Father came back last night. Don't you want to go to see your father? It's just right that you can go today. Kakashi, wearing a mask, said calmly, but Uchiha Feiyu keenly felt a hint of impatience from Kakashi's tone. If it were someone else, they might misunderstand that Kakashi had a bad attitude because of Uchiha Feiyu's request. However, Uchiha Feiyu knew Kakashi very well. At least Kakashi, who was still in the cub state, was the kind of person who would respond to his requests. It was impossible for him to have any emotions because of his own requests. Could it be that Konoha White Fang's mission failed this time? Uchiha Feiyu turned this thought in his mind. According to the time, it was almost at this time that Konoha White Fang ushered in the first and last failed mission in his life. After that, Hitaki Sakumo couldn't stand the rumors and committed suicide at home. To some extent, the death of Konoha White Fang was also one of the fuses of the Third Ninja World War. Under the leadership of Kakashi, Uchiha Feiyu soon arrived at his door. Kakashi knocked on the door. After a while, a ninja who looked a little tired opened the door. This ninja was tall and had a cold face. From his silver hair and handsome appearance, we can see the blood relationship between him and Kakashi. His body was straight and his movements were standard and refined, as if he was a sharp blade. Only his bloodshot eyes and slightly confused eyes could show his fatigue. 
The current Konoha Ninja village has not reached the time when rumors are spreading everywhere, but the only mission failure in his life has obviously dealt a big blow to this ninja who has always maintained a perfect record. Uchiha Feiyu, who knew the future well, knew that all this was just the beginning. Soon, the rumors in Konoha village, the accusations of other ninjas and partners would be the real reasons for the break of Konoha White Fang. Dad, this is the strange Uchiha I was talking about. Kakashi was young and did not see his father's decadence, but he also knew that his father would not be in a good mood after the failure of the mission. He briefly introduced it and stopped talking. After hearing Kakashi's words, Hitaki Sakumo focused his eyes on Uchiha Feiyu. After looking at Uchiha Feiyu for a while, the Konoha White Fang was quite surprised. Are you Kakashi's friend? You're doing pretty well in physical training. There aren't many Uchiha clans willing to work on their foundations these days. I've heard some rumors about the Uchiha clans, and now it seems like you're not just some mediocre person who just woke up the Sharingan by chance. As the elite ninja with the most missions in Konoha, Konoha White Fang naturally knows the Uchiha clan very well. Apart from external factors such as personality, the clan is indeed the largest clan in Konoha in terms of strength. But the Uchiha clan still has its own shortcomings, which is that they over-pursue their own bloodline, which results in most Uchiha clans not having a solid foundation. After all, the Sharingan is too omnipotent. As long as you awaken the blood succession limit, you can easily copy various physical techniques and ninjutsu, and it has a very high bonus to illusions. It can be said that as long as you have the Sharingan, any Uchiha can become a comprehensive and blind ninja in a short period of time. With such a convenient ability, those Uchiha are naturally unwilling to work hard to polish their physical skills and learn ninjutsu, but instead pursue the development of their own blood. But the Uchiha Feiyu in front of him could tell from the calluses on his hands, his steady steps, and his thick body that he had polished his body to a certain extent, which was rare among Uchiha. Such Uchiha may seem like aliens, but their actual achievements are much better than those who blindly pursue the Sharingan. It has not been opened to the level of kaleidoscope. In the final analysis, the Sharingan is an auxiliary blood succession limit. People who possess the Sharingan can easily reach the ultimate level of skills. At this point, what determines its final height is its own foundation. Oh, senior, please don't praise me. Kakashi is five years younger than me. I can't even win. If I can't be called a mediocre person, then I can only be called a loser. Uchiha Hiba chuckled and said self-deprecating words, which made Hitaki Sakumo laugh dumbly. Well, I heard Kakashi say something about you. It seems that you have some ideas of your own. But your mentality is really different from that of ordinary ninjas, let alone those Uchihas. Speaking of which, your attitude of being unfazed by favors and humiliations is more suitable for the profession of ninja. Uchiha Feiyu was slightly startled, but he did not expect that Hitaki Sakumo would say such a thing. This Konoha White Fang was very clear when he looked at others. When it was his turn, he was not what he said. Easy. However, Uchiha Feiyu is still thinking about Konoha White Fang's soul, so naturally he won't be idle to enlighten him. If Konoha White Fang has his own ideas, he, Uchiha Feiyu, will suffer a big loss. In the yard of Hitaki's house, Uchiha Feiyu was performing his physical skills meticulously. It is said to be a physical skill, but in fact Uchiha Feiyu still holds two kanai in his hands. If you can barely call it a sword skill, it can be regarded as a sword skill. When physical skills have not reached a certain level, whether or not there is a weapon in the hand is a completely different matter. Even in the world of Naruto, there are few people who can break steel with their physical body. Hitaki Sakumo stood aside like a javelin, pointing out Uchiha Hiba's training movements. It is definitely impossible to expect the White Fang of Konoha to teach ninjutsu and swordsmanship. I am not White Fang's apprentice, but it is not difficult to ask him to correct his training methods. Raise your right arm a little higher to protect your head. Stretching your left leg back slightly can make the chassis stronger. This kanai thrust should be left with a little force, so that you can attack faster after the opponent dodges. Even if Hitaki Sakumo's condition is not good, Uchiha Hiba's guidance is definitely more than enough. Not to mention, under Hitaki Sakumo's guidance, Uchiha Hiba can completely feel his progress. Just after two hours of guidance, I felt like I was completely transformed. 
If he and Kakashi were to fight again now, it would be hard to tell the outcome. If the time was prolonged, Uchiha Feiyu would have a better chance of winning. You guys, didn't you say you don't want to be a ninja? I think you train quite hard. Hitaki Kakashi, who was also practicing, looked at Uchiha Feiyu and said mockingly. Uchiha Feiyu rolled his eyes and shouted back. I'm not stupid. Being a ninja or something has become a foregone conclusion anyway. In addition, the situation is so tense during this period. Maybe a ninja war will break out one day. For the sake of my own life, I have to train hard. Uchiha Feiyu will not bet his life on the scammers of Konoha's high-level officials. After all, no matter what his relationship with Uchiha is, Feiyu is still in Uchiha now. You must control your own destiny. To control your own destiny in this world, you must have strength. How can you have strength? You can only practice. So it is true that I don't want to be a ninja, and it is also true that I practice hard. There is no contradiction between the two. However, after hearing Uchiha Feiyu casually talking about the Great Ninja War, Hitaki Kakashi was stunned for a moment. The Great Ninja War. No way. The Second Ninja War just ended a few years ago. Where did you hear the unreliable news? Naruto's timeline in the original book is a mess, but roughly speaking, between the Second Ninja War and the Third Ninja War, there was a pause of seven to eight years at most. This little time was actually not enough for several ninja villages to recover from the last war, which was why Kakashi was surprised. Even if the atmosphere in the ninja world is a bit tense now, Kakashi still feels that it is just a small friction between some ninja villages at most. In the end, it will at best start some local wars and is unlikely to turn into a full-scale war. However, Hitaki Sakumo, the Konoha White Fang, remained silent for a moment, his face became more gloomy and tired, and he said with a bit of self-blame in his tone. A war between the ninja world. It's really hard to say. Kakashi, you should also learn from Feiyu recently and practice hard. A war between the ninja world is not impossible. Uchiha Feiyu was stunned for a moment. You know, the third ninja world war was quite unexpected. Today's five major ninja villages have not fully recovered. It stands to reason that they can maintain peace for at least another three to five years. However, the sudden disappearance of the third case cage and the suicide of Konoha White Fang completely detonated the conflict between the major ninja villages. But whether it was the disappearance of the third case cage or the suicide of Konoha White Fang, they were all low probability events. Under such circumstances, how could Hitaki Sakumo be so positive about the outbreak of war? Could it be because his mission is related to the Third Ninja War? If you think about it carefully, ordinary tasks do not require the action of a ninja of Konoha White Fang's level. A task that allows Konoha White Fang to take action, and even requires the assistance of companions, wouldn't it be to investigate the situation in Suna Ninja Village? After the disappearance of the Third Case Cage, the Sand Ninja Village immediately set its target on Konoha. Although this was a bit of a scapegoat, some connection must be found. A ninja who could kill the third case cage silently in the Suna ninja village could probably find less than five fingers in the entire ninja world. If Konoha White Fang, who had a big hatred against the Suna ninja, was discovered in the land of wind at this time, the blame would still be there. It's really possible that it could be pinned on Konoha's head. After Hitaki Sakumo said that, he was in a daze. Naturally, he didn't expect that Uchiha Feiyu would analyze a lot of problems after hearing his words. Father, is there really going to be a ninja war? It's only been seven years since the last war. You can't say bad things, Kakashi, work hard. Although Kakashi was young, he was slightly surprised after seeing the obvious change in his father's expression. He didn't know exactly what happened in Suna Ninja Village, but he also knew that his father had experienced the Second Ninja War and was by no means a random person. He said that this ninja war is very likely to start, and then the possibility of a ninja war happening in the future is more than 50%. After talking about the topic of war, the atmosphere at the scene suddenly became serious. In this serious atmosphere, Uchiha Feiyu also quickly said goodbye to Kakashi and Hitaki Sakumo. However, before leaving, Uchiha Feiyu asked Hitaki Sakumo for the White Fang short sword in the name of curiosity and played with it for a while. Fortunately, although Hitaki Sakumo has always been called a samurai, he is still a ninja after all. 
He has no obsession with his weapon and gave the weapon to Uchiha Feiyu without much hesitation. Uchiha Feiyu looked at the White Fang short sword over and over again, and admired the chakra conductivity and sharpness of the sword. In fact, he used his own ability to summon spirits and generals to leave a mark on the White Fang short sword. There is no way. Even if you know that Hitaki Sakuma will not live long, the souls that die in this world will stay on the body for at most 10 minutes before going to the pure land, and Uchiha Feiyu doesn't think that he can arrive within 10 minutes of Hitaki Sakumo's death. After being marked with the mark of soul binding and general dispatching, this white fang short sword can temporarily trap Hitaki Sakumo's soul, leaving enough time for Uchiha Hiha to summon his soul. It can be said that the most important thing for Uchiha Hiha to visit Hitaki Sakumo this time is to leave a mark on the white fang short sword. As for Hitaki Sakumo's guidance, it is actually a pleasant surprise. Three days after visiting Hitaki Sakumo, it was time for the ninja school to start. Speaking of which, Uchiha Feiyu, as a former classmate of Hitaki Kakashi, was actually in the same class as Uchiha Obito, Nohara Rin, Asuma and others, but the only people who were really in his class were Obito, Rin, and Kai. It was just that this guy was five or six years older than his classmates, and he didn't want to be a ninja. He was out of tune in the whole class, and he didn't have many real friends. When he arrived at the gate of the ninja school today, he felt that the atmosphere was a little wrong. Feiyu, you're here. By the way, did you hear the news? Uchiha Obito came over mysteriously and said to Uchiha Feiyu. They were both Uchiha, and they were both outliers among the Uchiha. This made the relationship between Uchiha Obito and Uchiha Feiyu much better than other classmates, and they were also rare acquaintances of Uchiha Feiyu. Uchiha Feiyu showed some doubts on his face. Being an outlier was not without cost. At least, Uchiha Feiyu was often the last to know about the various gossips circulating in the class. Look, even the silly Obito now seemed to have heard some inside information, and only Uchiha Feiyu knew nothing. What news? Uchiha Feiyu asked while thinking, and Obito hurried over and said. We are about to graduate early. It is said that the ninjas in the 4th, 5th, and 6th grades this year can graduate directly. Graduate early. Has the current situation reached this point? Uchiha Feiyu said in surprise and frowned. Of course, he was not troubled by graduation. What really made Uchiha Feiyu think was the problem behind graduating early? Generally speaking, unless they are geniuses who want to make a big splash and get more resources and attention, ordinary students in ninja schools will graduate after six years of study. After all, the profession of ninja is always accompanied by various dangers. If you grow up in school for a longer period of time, you will naturally have more chances to survive when performing tasks. The talents of Konoha's 12 little strong men are not inferior to those of Kakashi and his generation, but none of them graduated early, which is very telling. And once there is a large-scale early graduation, there is only one possibility, the ninja world war is about to begin. Of course, even if they graduate early, it is impossible to let the newly graduated students go to the battlefield directly. To put it bluntly, even if they are training cannon fodder, they also pay attention to cost-effectiveness. They can't be trained in the ninja school for several years and only waste a few kanai on the battlefield. But by graduating early, these students can be allowed to practice for a longer period of time. If the frontline battlefield is tight in the future, they can pull a group of fresh troops to go directly to the battlefield. Ah, what situation has come to this point? Feiyu, what did you say? Why don't I understand? Uchiha Obito blinked his eyes. Although he received the gossip earlier than Feiyu, it is obvious that it is still a bit difficult to expect Kenji to see the problems behind the early graduation. However, the ninjas in the Naruto world have always matured early, and with the experience passed on by ninjas like parents, other young ninjas basically know the current situation well, which is exactly why Uchiha Feiyu feels that the atmosphere is wrong. You are really a bit slow. Haven't you ever thought about why we have to graduate early? The last wave of ninjas who graduated early was just on the eve of World War II. Ah. Then, why do we have to graduate early this time? Obito looked so stunned that Feiyu couldn't help but hold his forehead. This person can become the big boss of the ninja world in the future, which really makes people worry about the intelligence of the ninjas in the Naruto world. 
Feiyu means that there is a high possibility that a large-scale war will break out again in the ninja world. A little girl with oil paint on her face and looking gentle came over and interrupted the conversation between the two. So that's it. Lin, you are so smart. The one who spoke was Nohara Lin, the white moonlight in Uchiha Obito's heart, and also the root of his blackening. Of course, Obito and Rin are only about eight years old now. Although ninjas mature early, they are not so early. However, because of her gentle temperament and concern for everyone, Obito, who does not have many friends in the class, also regards Rin as very important. The reason why Obito likes Rin, to a certain extent, is that other girls will not pay attention to him at all. Only Rin, who has a gentle personality, has a kind heart towards everyone. After Obito said something to Nohara Rin with a silly smile, he suddenly seemed to come back to his senses and shouted loudly. What? A large-scale war broke out. What's wrong? The two Uchiha tails, are you scared? The triumphant voice sounded in his ears, and Uchiha Feiyu looked up and saw that it was Serutobi Asuma from the next class who spoke. Asuma, you're here to get a fight again when you have nothing to do. It's fine if you say Obito is the last one, but why did you bring me along too? Yes, it's fine if you say Obito is the last one. What do you mean it's fine if I am the last one? Obito nodded, and suddenly realized something was wrong. He turned his head and looked at Feiyu in astonishment, only to see Feiyu's disgusted expression. Asuma, a strong contender for the top student of this class, is also known as a genius in the current ninja school. Of course, the so-called genius is actually not very valuable. Among the peers of this class and the previous class, the ones who achieve the most in the future are actually Kakashi, Obito and Might Guy. Kakashi has graduated a long time ago, and Obito and Might Guy are still at the bottom of the class. The only ones who can become a Jonin in the future and have good talents are only Kurinai and Asuma. Kurinai's strength is originally lacking. Illusion-type ninjas are late-stage ninjas, and their personality does not like to show off. Therefore, Asuma now has a feeling of, there is no tiger in the mountain, and the monkey is the king. They say it is a chief or a genius, but there are several geniuses in the ninja school every year. In order to compete for the position of the chief, they have been competing fiercely since childhood, but where do these geniuses and chiefs go after graduation? Some of them went to the cemetery, and more of them were lost in the crowd. In Uchiha Feiyu's eyes, Asuma's future achievements, although not mediocre, are definitely not outstanding. He is almost the most elite among the Jonin, but there is still a huge gap compared to the cage. If you are not five years older than me, how can you beat me? After hearing Uchiha Feiyu's words, Asuma broke down on the spot, because he was really beaten by Uchiha Feiyu. Uchiha Feiyu was just a bad attitude, but he was very serious in training and never slacked off. Even if there is no good inheritance, relying on the physical fitness and chakra bonus brought by the spirit serving method, except Kakashi, other young kids have been beaten by him in the battle class. Speaking of which, the reason why Uchiha Feiyu was called the last one was just because of his age and his lack of effort during the exam. In fact, the teachers and students in the school knew that this guy was still very good at fighting. It was just because of his age that most people looked down on him. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I can only bully you because of my age. After all, you are the eldest son of the Hokage family. Asshole. What do you mean by the eldest son of the Hokage family? I am who I am, and I have nothing to do with the old man. As soon as Asuma heard the question about the Hokage, his defense was quickly broken. This guy has been a problem child since he was a child. What he hates most is that others regard him as a subordinate of the Hokage. In the original book, he went to the daimyo's mansion to be one of the twelve guardians for a period of time. However, there is one good thing about the Naruto world, that is, few people belong to the type of father-based type referring to background, not bloodline. There is definitely care, but there will never be spoiling. Although Asuma is the son of the Hokage, Uchiha Feiyu beat him up, so let him be beaten up. As long as he is not dead or disabled, even if the Hokage or other ninjas know about it, they don't care about such things at all. Okay, I know you have nothing to do with the Hokage. Your father never takes special care of you. You beat your first student by punching and kicking yourself. Uchiha Feiyu looked indifferent and weird, and Asuma's face turned pale. Although he said the truth, 
why did it sound so awkward? But before Asuma could say anything else, Lin, who was watching the others, spoke gently and changed the subject. By the way, Asuma, you should know the most about the movements of the upper echelons of the ninja village. Do you know what went wrong? Why did we suddenly have to fight? I heard. I heard. It seems that it was because a powerful ninja in Konoha made a mistake when performing an important task, which aroused the hostility of the sand village. The anger of a child comes and goes quickly. Asuma is only eight or nine years old now. After being changed by Lin, he quickly put the matter behind him and started talking about the secrets of the upper echelons. Of course, what Asuma could find out was definitely not a real secret. At least the official ninja circle in the ninja village now knows much more detailed information than Asuma. For example, what is the name of the core ninja who performed the mission? Uchiha Feiyu believes that most of the Chunin and all the Janin in Konoha should know that it is Hitaki Sakumo, but Asuma, even if he is the son of the Hokage, still does not know this information. In fact, the confidentiality of this S-level mission is extremely high. In theory, it is impossible to tell other people except the ninjas who carry out the mission and several Konoha high-level officials, let alone spread it to the ninja students. Even if it is just a rough idea, it is definitely pushed by someone behind the scenes, and looking at the current situation, it may become known to everyone in the end. Hitaki Sakumo, he was really tricked, otherwise the news would not spread so quickly. Just when Uchiha Feiyu was thinking, at this moment in the Hokage's office, the third Hokage was smoking a pipe and looking at his good friend Danzo with a serious face. Danzo, there have been rumors in the village recently, all about the failure of the White Fang mission. Is this your handiwork? I don't know what you are talking about. Danzo denied it with a righteous face. He knew that what he did could not be hidden from the third Hokage, but he certainly could not admit it. White Fang messed up the mission this time, it's normal for everyone to talk about it. You know, because of this mission, we may soon go to war with the Sand Village. Such a big mistake has happened, it's normal for the ninjas in the village to talk about it. Can't people talk about it when they do something wrong? The third Hokage ignored Donzo's sophistry. He knew his old friend too well and said coldly. Put away your little thoughts. No matter what, Sakumo is the most capable ninja in Konoha now, and he has been punished. Let's stop here. Humph. Anyway, this matter has nothing to do with me. Danzo was annoyed and turned away. It's impossible to stop here. Sakumo's prestige in the village is so high that these rumors alone are not enough to shake his position, nor are they enough to completely undermine his prestige. If I don't take this opportunity to completely defeat Sakumo's prestige, how can I compete with him for the position of Hokage in the future? Ninja, isn't it better to be a tool man? Why do you have to have such a big reputation? Thinking of this, Danzo secretly made up his mind. Not enough, far from enough, I need to increase the intensity of the attack on him until he has no capital to inherit the position of Hokage. For Serutobi Hirazan, he is a high-ranking Hokage. Although the reputation of Konoha White Fang is high at this stage, it does not have much impact on him. As long as the reputation of White Fang is slightly hit, he can make better use of this sharp blade. But for Danzo, who is full of the position of Hokage, Hitaki Sakumo is simply a thorn in the eye. If he doesn't pull him out, he won't be able to sleep well at night. Uchiha Feiyu naturally didn't know anything about the confrontation in the Hokage's office. He is now full of the loss of not being able to finish the six years of ninja school. When he thinks that he will soon be incorporated into the official ninja team, he is full of anxiety. In theory, Uchiha Feiyu's strength is not weak, at least he has reached the level of Chunin, and he is not bad among Chunin. Although in the original work, Chunin level ninjas are just cannon fodder, in fact, Chunin has left the bottom of the ninja system and is basically considered a middle level cadre. Generally, in ordinary teams, they are all team leaders. If this kind of strength is in peacetime, the danger is not great, but the problem is that it is not peacetime now. Once the ninja world war begins, even the Jonin will die one by one, let alone Chunin. For example, the most dazzling record of Minato Namikaze in the Third World War was that he wiped out 50 elite ninjas of Rock Ninja in one battle. These so-called elite ninjas are at least Chunin, and none of them are weaker than Uchiha Feiyu. Anything can happen on the battlefield. 
It is impossible to say that Uchiha Feiyu is a Chunin, and the opponent will only send Chunin to deal with him. You never know, bad luck, when performing a mission, look up and see, oh, isn't it the Kei's cage, Rakage, and Suchikage coming from the opposite side. This time, young man, start over. So during this last period of time, Uchiha Feiyu often passed by Kakashi's house, just to see when Hitaki Sakuma would commit suicide. During this period of time, the atmosphere in Konoha has become more and more strange. Uchiha Feiyu, who often passed by Kakashi's house and occasionally visited, had already found that many villagers were looking at the house of the Hitaki family in a dodgy way. People passing by on the street all had solemn expressions, as if they knew a big secret but couldn't tell it. Uchiha Feiyu knew very well what these people knew, nothing more than the failure of Hitaki Sakumo's mission. He thought that such things would cause a lot of uproar, but he didn't expect that it would end up in a scene of cold violence. In fact, it is normal to think about it carefully who is Konoha White Fang. On the battlefield, he killed at least 800 ninjas if not a thousand. He was so powerful that he shocked the entire ninja world. The civilians in Konoha didn't dare to throw rotten vegetable leaves at his house. The sense of boundary between civilians and ninjas in this world is very strong. Even the civilians living in Konoha Ninja Village may not be too afraid of ninjas because they are used to seeing ninjas, but they dare not commit suicide to this extent. What was manifested was that when Konoha White Fang went out, many civilians seemed to avoid him like a plague god. After seeing him go away, they talked about it in the back. Of course, with White Fang's ability, most of the discussions could not escape his ears. However, not everyone was talking behind his back. On this day, when Uchiha Feiyu passed by the door of Hitaki's house, he heard a burst of noisy voices. I don't need anyone to save me. As a ninja, if you accept a mission, you must be aware of sacrificing for the mission. Because of my personal reasons, this mission failed and the village suffered heavy losses. It was my fault. I am willing to die to apologize. When he arrived, he saw several ninjas from the guard team grabbing an ordinary ninja and leaving, and a large group of civilians were talking about it. He got closer to the crowd, and Uchiha Feiyu didn't need to ask actively. He knew what had just happened from the discussion of the crowd. The ninja whose life was saved by White Fang publicly apologized, and even wanted to commit suicide to apologize, but was stopped by the guard team and the Anbu. Touching his chin, Uchiha Feiyu felt that the mastermind behind the scenes was too crude, both obvious and deliberate. A simple truth, if you want to die to apologize, why don't you commit suicide at home? Why run to the door of Hitaki Sakumo's house? Isn't this obviously a trick to deceive White Fang? Only people who have not experienced the internet age are easier to deceive now. In the future, they will be discovered in minutes. Although the means are rough, the intention is really cruel. Thousands of people point fingers at him, and he is destroyed by the accumulated criticism. It's just a struggle for power and profit. Is it necessary to do it so ugly? After this, White Fang's reputation for 20 years of fighting for Konoha was destroyed. It took Hitaki Sakumo 20 years to establish the title of Konoha White Fang, but it took less than 20 days for the mastermind behind the scenes to destroy it. The next morning, when Uchiha Feiyu passed by Hitaki's house again, he already felt the breath of a powerful soul. Uchiha Feiyu was delighted, but his face showed no expression. He slowly slowed down his pace and prepared to knock on the door of the Hitaki family. However, before he could knock on the door, he heard a shrill scream. After a moment of hesitation, Uchiha Feiyu immediately broke the door open and rushed in. In the room, Kakashi, who is always known for his calmness, widened his eyes at this moment, and the mask covering his face was torn off most of the time, revealing his horrified and panicked expression. Opposite Kakashi, the famous Konoha White Fang in the entire ninja world was now kneeling on the ground crookedly, with blood all over the floor. The White Fang short knife that killed countless enemies was inserted into his abdomen, cutting a huge hole horizontally, and his internal organs flowed out. Ah. Father. Father, how are you? Kakashi threw himself on Hitaki Sakumo, and reached out to touch Hitaki Sakumo's body with some fear, but found that his father's body was cold, and he trembled all over. Uchiha Feiyu, who rushed in, glanced at the White Fang short sword. 
Through the ability of summoning spirits, he felt the powerful soul stored in the white fang short sword, and was immediately delighted. With a light wave of his hand, the soul in the white fang short sword was immediately summoned by Uchiha Feiyu. The souls in the Naruto world cannot be seen by the naked eye without chakra. In addition, Kakashi was now immersed in grief and panic, so he naturally did not notice Uchiha Feiyu's small movements. Feeling the unprecedented powerful souls he had collected, if it were not for the inappropriate atmosphere now, Uchiha Feiyu would have laughed excitedly. But after all, he was a friend of Kakashi, and he had a good impression of Konoha White Fang, so Uchiha Feiyu reluctantly showed a sad expression and reached out to pull up the dazed Kakashi. November of the 39th year of Konoha. The hero of the Konoha War, the head of the Anbu, and the famous White Fang Hitaki Sakumo, who was famous in the ninja world, committed suicide, shocking the ninja world. Some people were happy, some were worried, some were sad, some were happy, and more were unexpected. Of course, there are still many people who are happy. Upon hearing this news, most of the ninjas in the ninja world were overjoyed and clapped their hands in thanks. White Fang fought on the battlefields of World War II and made too many enemies. Especially this guy is a speed-type ninja who is very similar to Golden Flash. He is the best at bullying weaklings and mowing down enemies. He has killed countless ninjas. Ordinary ninjas from other ninja villages hate and fear him. This person, who was regarded as a demon king by other ninja villages, died in a peaceful period. He committed suicide for such a ridiculous reason. He was not even qualified to be on the memorial tablet after his death because he committed suicide. It was simply a joke. For the ninjas of other ninja villages, this was a comedy joke. For Konoha, this was black humor. Almost as soon as the news of White Fang's suicide spread, the Sand Ninja Village immediately sent its army to the border of the river country, as if it was about to start fighting. At the same time, the other major ninja villages also took action. At this point, the ninjas of Konoha can be sure that the Third Ninja World War is about to begin. The suicide of Konoha White Fang not only made the entire Konoha lose the sharpest knife among the high-end combat power, but also brought a huge blow to the morale of the entire Konoha. White Fang went through life and death all his life, and he did not know how many contributions he had made to Konoha. Although the failure of this mission had a significant impact, it was just a minor flaw. As a result, such a brave and fearless ninja with a nearly perfect personality was forced to death by the public opinion in the village, which naturally made all the ninjas feel sad. Those Jonin and higher-ranking Chunins knew that this public opinion storm was related to the top leaders of Konoha, and their trust in the top leaders was greatly reduced. Some ordinary ninjas were frightened by the tragic end of White Fang and could no longer trust their companions. After all, even a figure like Konoha White Fang paid the price of his life to save his companions. In this case, who would be willing to trust their companions? The consequences of White Fang's death are fermenting, but these have nothing to do with Uchiha Feiyu, a ninja student who is about to graduate. As the first outsider to discover White Fang's suicide, Uchiha Feiyu was directly released after being interrogated all night. In everyone's opinion, this matter had nothing to do with him. No one knows what Uchiha Feiyu gained from this storm. After returning home, Uchiha Hiba closed the door and stretched out a hand excitedly. A faint blue light point emerged from his hand, expanded instantly, and transformed into the image of Hitaki Sakumo. It's just that Konoha White Fang's body is now translucent, and his eyes are slightly confused, and he looks dull. Uchiha Feiyu has already discovered that the souls that have been trained in the world of Naruto seem to be a little different from the world under one person. Maybe because of the difference between chakra and energy, the souls who have just been restrained by the souls are, basically do not have complete reason and thinking. However, as long as Feiyu operates his skills, these souls will regain their consciousness after a period of time. The stronger the strength, the faster the recovery speed. All this time, Feiyu had only the souls of animals in his hands. He originally thought that human souls would be different, but now it seems that they also follow the original rules. With a gentle wave of his hand, under the operation of the Juling Sendang technique, Hitaki Sakumo's soul, which was originally floating in the air, instantly turned into a stream of light and merged into Uchiha Feiyu's body. In just an instant, Uchiha Feiyu could feel the chakra in his body surge instantly. Although Hitaki Sakumo was not good at chakra, 
As a shadow level strongman, the chakra in his body was at least as high as today's Uchiha Feiyu is 10 or 20 times stronger. Even after turning into a soul body, he did not carry chakra, but he still had huge spiritual power. After being integrated into Uchiha Feiyu's body, it was nearly doubled. After all, the chakra in the current Uchiha Feiyu's body is slightly stronger than that of the Chunin, so the amplitude appears to be huge. The increase in chakra is only the most obvious benefit of the soul possession ability for Uchiha Feiyu. What can really transform Uchiha Feiyu comes from Hitaki Sakumo's own consciousness. But as soon as Hitaki Sakumo's soul entered Feiyu's body, he felt that his vision went dark, and a lot of negative emotions instantly flowed into his spirit. Frustration, collapse, despair, anger, worry. Konoha White Fang, who committed suicide, was obviously full of resentment in his heart, and could be driven to the point of suicide by some rumors. To some extent, Konoha White Fang could be considered a psychopath. If Hitaki Sakumo had some Uchiha blood, he would be able to open up a kaleidoscope right now and let those high-level officials in Konoha take a look. Under the impact of a large number of negative emotions, Uchiha Feiyu's eyes were blood red, revealing a Magatama Sharingan. The Magatama in the Sharingan kept spinning, and after reaching a certain speed limit, it split into two Magatama in an instant. In an instant, Uchiha Feiyu felt that the quality and quantity of his chakra had increased to a certain extent. At the same time, the world in front of him became much clearer. In addition to the increase in dynamic vision, he could also see vaguely. The flow of chakra. It's just that Uchiha Feiyu didn't have time to be happy now. He covered his head for a long time before he recovered from Hitaki Sakumo's emotional impact. After recovering, Uchiha Feiyu closed his eyes without saying a word, and projected his spirit into the purple mansion in his mind. I saw in that spiritual world, a figure covered in black smoke, standing here. The so-called dark smoke is actually the resentment of Hitaki Sakumo when he died like the animal souls captured by Uchiha Feiha in the past. Because of his low intelligence, the resentment is just some gray smoke. And Hitaki Sakumo not only had a powerful soul, but also died with a lot of resentment. It's no wonder that in the spiritual space, he turned into such a big devil. But in fact, after the Sharingan that supported Uchiha Feiyu evolved into two Magatama, most of this resentment had dissipated, that is, in just a few moments, all the black smoke had disappeared. I. Where is this? Pure land. Sorry, Sakumo Senpei, you are not going to the pure land now, but are in my spiritual space. Hearing this slightly familiar voice, Hitaki Sakumo quickly looked up and saw Uchiha Hiba standing in front of him. Are you? Kakashi's Uchiha friend. Uchiha Feiyu. This is your spiritual space. Are you restraining my soul? Hitaki Sakumo had a strange look on his face. He really couldn't imagine that he would meet his son's classmate. In the eyes of Konoha White Fang, Uchiha Feiyu is just a strange Uchiha with little motivation and a sense of sobriety in the world. His talent is pretty good, but because he entered school at a very young age, his strength is just average, and he doesn't look like someone who has restricted his soul. That's true, Sakumo Senpei. It's really not easy to find a soul as powerful as you, senior, so I can only take offense. As he spoke, Uchiha Feiyu shook his fingers slightly, and Hitaki Sakumo could immediately feel a huge sense of restraint coming from his body. The eight unique skills in the world of one person under heaven have bug level priority in their respective fields. In the original work, even the family immortals who have practiced for hundreds or thousands of years have no power to resist the practitioners who can summon spirits and generals. When Hitaki Sakumo was alive, he didn't need to use a second knife to kill Uchiha Feiyu, but after he died and became a soul, Uchiha Feiyu wanted to control him, but it was just a matter of thought. Of course, Uchiha Feiyu didn't really control Hitaki Sakumo, he just showed that he had such ability, and then gave up controlling Hitaki Sakumo's soul. Just like the impure world reincarnation technique, the tightly controlled impure world body and the impure world body with self, even if the hardware conditions are exactly the same, because of combat experience, combat will in other software, there is a huge difference in strength. Uchiha Feiyu naturally hopes to have a Hitaki Sakumo with self to help him. Despite this, Hitaki Sakumo could also feel Uchiha Hiha's ability to restrain him. He showed a bitter smile on his face and said, 
I never thought. I couldn't even rest in peace after death. Then, Uchiha Hiha, what exactly do you want to do by leaving my soul? It's very simple, Hitaki Sakumo Sr., I hope to borrow your power. My power. Yes, this secret technique of mine can directly borrow the power carried by the soul controlled by me. As long as I have a strong soul to help, I can easily improve my strength. Although I can also forcibly control the soul in my hand, by comparison, it is still your willing cooperation, senior, that can maximize the effect of this secret technique. I see. Hitaki Sakumo sighed, and for a moment, he even felt a little ironic. He didn't expect that he had been a tool his whole life, and now he couldn't even live in peace after death. Seeing Hitaki Sakumo's depressed and decadent mood, Uchiha Fei thought for a moment, then continued. Sakumo Senpei, I know you may not be able to accept the idea of your soul being controlled, but if you think about it differently, isn't this equivalent to living your life all over again? You have fulfilled your obligations to Konoha. You don't need to think about so many things anymore. You can live completely for yourself. The most important thing is, don't you want to see the current condition of your child Kakashi? Sure enough, when Kakashi was mentioned, Hitaki Sakumo, who was still looking bad, suddenly became a little angry. He looked at Uchiha Fei with some worry, and asked softly. Kakashi. Dot how is he doing now? What do you think? The father I admired the most suddenly died in front of him, with the appearance of committing suicide, and he couldn't even go to the memorial monument after death. You can imagine the blow to him. Quote. Anyway, you look lifeless now. I think this guy might follow you at any time. Uchiha Feiyu's face was full of worry, as if he was worried about Kakashi. Even if he survives, because you are such a vivid example, I'm afraid he will become the kind of tool man who lives entirely for the mission. Perhaps he will join a dark organization like the Roots in the future, and then become a ruthless ninja who has obliterated any emotions and performed tasks cold-bloodedly. In the end, he will be abandoned by the top management of Konoha and die in a dark and unknown corner. The expression on Hitaki Sakumo's face twitched. Even if he heard the exaggeration in Uchiha Feiyu's words, he had to worry about poor Kakashi. After committing suicide once, Hitaki Sakumo's mind came out of its original state of mind. Thinking back to his current son, he suddenly felt a sense of regret. It would be okay if he died, but no matter how mature Kakashi is, he is only an 8 or 9 year old boy. Without him as his father, what will Kakashi be like in the future? How pitiful. My father died because he was rescuing his companions and neglecting his mission. It is estimated that Kakashi will become a cold-blooded ninja who has no companions except his mission. Uchiha Feiyu said a few words deliberately, which immediately made Hitaki Sakumo's expression become more worried. Even though he knew that Uchiha Feiyu wanted to use Kakashi to take advantage of him, how could he not worried about your son? Okay, stop talking. I will cooperate with your secret technique. But you must also promise me to help me take good care of Kakashi. Eaten away by guilt, Hitaki Sakumo agreed to Uchiha Feiyu's conditions without much hesitation. Uchiha Feiyu's face immediately showed joy. Don't worry, there's no problem, Sakumo Senpei. When the time comes, I can let your soul control my body and see Kakashi's current condition for myself. After making an agreement with Hitaki Sakumo, Konoha White Fang couldn't wait to see his son's current situation. Uchiha Feiyu didn't say much, he just let Konoha White Fang possess him, and then sneaked into Hitaki Mansion. Even if the body of Uchiha Feiyu is used, it is enough for Konoha White Fang to exert the strength of an elite Junin, and his infiltration will naturally not be discovered by Kakashi. Seeing his son's insensitive, indifferent and withdrawn appearance, Hitaki Sakumo once again regretted his suicide. Feiyu, is there any way you can help Kakashi? I'm very worried about his current state. After leaving Hitaki's house, Hitaki Sakumo immediately looked at Uchiha Feiha anxiously and asked. Now that you are worried, what did you do earlier? Uchiha Feiyu murmured in his heart, but he also knew that if he could solve Kakashi's problem, then he would truly conquer Hitaki Sakumo. It's just that Kakashi's psychological problem is really not easy to deal with. The only way is to interact with him consistently like Obito and Guy. Not to mention whether Uchiha Feiha can be that kind of hot-blooded idiot, the time spent alone is enough to give Uchiha Feiyu a headache. Sakumo Senpei, you are Kakashi's father. 
Logically speaking, you should be better at enlightening Kakashi than me, right? Uchiha Hiba, who couldn't think of a way, simply threw the problem back to Hitaki Sakumo, and Hitaki Sakumo suddenly showed a bitter face. Speaking of which, as a famous genius in Konoha, Kakashi has been the kind of child of other people since he was a child. There has never been a time when he needed Sakumo Hitaki's guidance. What's more, Hitaki Sakumo didn't play the role of a confidant at home before. Dad, who knows how to comfort Kakashi? Seeing Hitaki Sakumo's silence, Uchiha Feiha sighed and asked again. Senior, how did you get along with Kakashi in the past? What are your favorite things to do? Ah, uh, take him to practice. Okay, it seems like you have no hope, senior. If it were me, maybe I should become Kakashi's opponent. In the Naruto world, lifelong enemies like this are often the strongest bonds, such as Uzumaki Naruto and Uchiha Sasuke, the third Hokage and Shimura Danzo, Orochimaru and Jiraiya. Kakashi's two best friends, Kai and Obito, also regarded him as an opponent. In the end, Kakashi was able to get out of the trough, which was also related to his two friends. But to be honest, Uchiha Feiyu didn't challenge Kakashi much before. On the contrary, Kakashi intentionally or unintentionally caused trouble for him several times. Maybe it's a bit troublesome. I'm not the kind of hot-blooded idiot. But in the name of caring about Kakashi, I'll find a way to bring him out of the trough, which won't make people suspicious. But, if I don't use the soul binding, I can't seem to beat Kakashi now. Uchiha Feiyu said while looking at Hitaki Sakumo. Hitaki Sakumo obviously understood what Uchiha Feiyu meant and said directly. I will teach you my own white fang sword technique, as well as lightning escape and wind escape. With your foundation, it should be easy to beat Kakashi with a little guidance. That's settled. Hitaki Sr. Uchiha Feiyu immediately agreed. He was looking forward to a high-level inheritance, but he had been looking forward to it for a long time. Although he was called Uchiha, because he joined halfway, the various high-level ninjutsu illusions and Sharingan usages in Uchiha were not really open to Uchiha Feiyu. And it is precisely because of the name Uchiha that it is difficult for Uchiha Feiyu to obtain high-level inheritance from other places. Now that he has obtained the soul of Hitaki Sakumo, he naturally has his eyes on the inheritance of Konoha White Fang. It is also possible to forcibly borrow the power of the soul binding general and slowly explore through possession, but if Hitaki Sakumo can personally guide on the basis of possession, then the speed of progress will naturally be faster. In the quiet forest, a faint lightning suddenly lit up. A figure covered in lightning crossed the forest at a very fast speed. Huge trees with a diameter of one or two meters collapsed in an instant. The light and shadow stopped instantly, revealing the figure of Uchiha Feiyu. He looked back at the tree he had cut down. The short knife in his hand flashed a faint light, as if it was a one-foot sword. The weapon in Uchiha Feiyu's hand was not a weapon made of chakra metal. With his financial conditions, he could not afford that kind of good stuff. This short knife is actually an ordinary standard weapon. It can have such a sharp sword light, which is entirely due to its superb chakra control skills. You learn really fast. I didn't even teach Kakashi these. Hitaki Sakumo spoke in a faint voice. Chakra into blade is already a high-level skill in the White Fang Sword technique. Even his son Kakashi has not yet learned this aspect. As a result, in the hands of Uchiha Feiyu, it has been learned in just two or three days. Not only the Chakra Blade technique, but also the rest of the lightning release to strengthen the body technique, as well as the advanced instant body technique and the matching swordsmanship techniques, Uchiha Feiyu has already mastered them now, and is only a little short of proficiency. Uchiha Feiyu has a solid foundation to learn so quickly, and the observation and body control brought by the two Magatama Sharingans are also helpful, but in fact, what really allows Uchiha Feiyu to have such learning ability is the possession ability of the Soul Conqueror. Hitaki Sakumo controls Uchiha Feiyu's body through the possession ability to perform ninjutsu for training, which is equivalent to learning for 10 days and a half months at a time. The learning effect of one day is comparable to two years of hard training, and two or three days is almost equivalent to teaching Uchiha Feiyu for five years. With this learning efficiency, Uchiha Feiyu has almost mastered most of the essence of the White Fang Sword technique, and the remaining are combat experience, chakra nature changes, depth of form changes and other basic issues. 
Even if Uchiha Feiyu makes no progress in the future and just follows Hitaki Sakumo's path, he can inherit 70% to 80% of Konoha White Fang's strength in the end, not counting his Sharingan bonus. As for why he only inherited 70% to 80% of Konoha White Fang's strength. That's because White Fang has Wind Attribute Chakra in addition to Lightning Attribute, while Uchiha Feiyu's own chakra has both Lightning and Fire Attributes. Although it is not impossible to develop the Wind Attribute after birth, and with Hitaki Sakumo's help, it will take at most one year to practice the change of Wind Attribute Chakra nature, but now that he is about to face the war, Uchiha Feiyu is still wise to put all his energy on the change of Lightning Attribute nature. By the way, Senior Sakumo, did you leave any ninjutsu scrolls? I think my swordsmanship and ninjutsu still have room for improvement. I was planning to leave a legacy after a few years when the system is fully mature. So, why do you ask that? Ah, the ninjutsu I learned should at least have a source, don't you really leave nothing behind? I did pass on the basics to Kakashi, but as for the more advanced ones, I plan to wait until Kakashi is 10 years old and his body matures before passing them on to him. Well, senior, you are ready to commit suicide, do you still want to take your swordsmanship to the underworld? Have you ever thought about leaving a legacy for your son? I didn't think so much at the time. Hitaki Sakumo's suicide was a sudden act of being obsessed with a dead end. It would be strange to say that Hitaki Sakumo really thought deeply before committing suicide. After all, normal men who consider their eight-year-old son would not commit suicide because of some rumors. Naturally, he didn't even consider the future of his eight-year-old son, so he naturally didn't care about his inheritance. But now thinking back, Hitaki Sakumo couldn't help but regret it. Apart from anything else, he should have left a legacy to his son. Although Kakashi graduated at the age of five and became a chunin at the age of six, he was a unique genius in the whole Konoha. In fact, at least half of Kakashi's achievements were due to Hitaki Sakumo. If it were an ordinary civilian ninja, no, even if his talent was not inferior to Kakashi, his growth rate would be much slower if he laid a good foundation since childhood. Now without his guidance and the inheritance he left behind, Kakashi would definitely not be able to maintain the same growth rate as before, and he might die in the Third Ninja World War. Then let's do this, Senior Hitaki Sakumo, you control my body and write a legacy on the spot, and then find a way to give it to Kakashi. Okay, that's the only way. When Hitaki Sakumo controls Uchiha Hiyu's body, he can also enjoy the bonus of the Sharingan bloodline at the same time. After the Sharingan is opened, Uchiha's body control ability will increase significantly in addition to the ability of the eyes, otherwise there is no way to directly copy other people's ninjutsu. Relying on this method, plus Hitaki Sakumo's original soul, the font written is exactly the same as the words written by Hitaki Sakumo when he was alive, plus some of Hitaki Sakumo's unique habits, there is no need to worry about Kakashi's suspicion. After the inheritance scroll was written, Uchiha Hiyu looked at the scroll and asked the spirit around him. Sakumo Senpei, how do I hand this scroll of inheritance to Kakashi? Should I put it in a hidden place known to both you and Kakashi? Just give the scroll to Kakashi. I have written instructions inside, so no one will be suspicious. Are you sure, senior? You and I didn't have any relationship before, so it's a bit too sudden to take out your scroll of inheritance. Hee <laughs> hee. It doesn't matter. Since my mission failed, you are the only ninja who has visited me many times. It's reasonable to hand over the scroll of inheritance to you. Okay, in that case, I will help you give this scroll to Kakashi. I hope this will help him get over it. After hearing this, Uchiha Feiyu no longer refused. Even if someone had doubts, it didn't matter, because the inheritance in the scroll was absolutely true. I believe that even if those ninjas had wild imaginations, they would not think of Uchiha Feiyu imprisoning the soul of White Fang. At most, they would sigh about Uchiha Feiyu's shit luck. Moreover, with the inheritance of Hitaki Sakumo, Uchiha Tobia would no longer arouse suspicion when he uses White Fang's swordsmanship in the future. At the same time, by returning the inheritance, he could also narrow the distance between him and Kakashi and find a way to enlighten him. Thanks for watching.